Hello there, newcomer. Welcome to the Life Tips Podcast. My name is Nate, and I'm here to help you navigate through important situations that affect our everyday lives and provide a roadmap for you to make the best decisions in the future. The fun part is that each topic is unique to whatever you're going through. And it doesn't matter your youth or gender. Everyone can benefit. So sit back, enjoy the ride, and let's discover how we can live our best life today. Enjoy. Hello world, welcome back to another Life Tips podcast episode. As usual, I just want to reiterate that you are listening to this podcast live on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and more, thanks to Anchor. Everything's free, the app is free, distribution to streaming platforms is free, etc., etc., You can even make money off your podcast. It's a one-stop shop for podcast development, basically. So if you want to get started on your own, all you have to do is go to www.anchor.fm, download the app to your Android or your iOS device, and start recording. So, as you all know, we're in the final month of 2019. Twelve months have come. We are nearing the end of the 365-day cycle with about 22 days left in 2019 and 16 left until Christmas Day. Wow. So, um, yeah. Part two. As we know, it's Christmas season, so Merry Christmas. Merry Xmas, depending upon how you pronounce it. Don't need to go over that again. So, uh, yeah, Christmas it really is the most wonderful time of the year, if you ask me. But in general, yes and no at the same time. As we saw in last week's episode, Christmas's meaning has been replaced. I discussed what it has been replaced with and whether or not you should give it a try. The it being dating. Of course, I did mention Santa and all the other myths and nonsense that the kids believe in, but primarily Christmas is being replaced with dating relationships and it's like everywhere now. It's it's in the Netflix movies and the Hallmark movies, everywhere. So this time I'm going to talk about a question a lot of singles most likely have going through their minds right now. It's one of those questions that I honestly did ask myself a couple years ago stopped asking it after a while because it was just completely pointless and unnecessary. But I did ask myself this question for a few years, especially in this particular holiday season. The question that I asked myself and the question that I pose a lot of singles are most likely asking themselves right now is how should I process everyone else dating and or getting engaged during the most wonderful time of the year, if it's not happening to me. Of course, obviously, dating is the focus of these Christmas podcasts, but let's be honest, people are getting engaged as well. And, you know, honestly, there's stages to it, 
if you're not ready to be engaged and go towards marriage, then don't even, you know, think about it. But there are stages. Start small, grow. So to answer the question, (laughs) it all depends on how you view singleness. How do you view being single? Do you dread it? Do you despise other people's love stories? Or are you optimistic, excuse me, optimistic and hopeful? Do you believe that you're worth being loved and one day someone will give you the love story you desire? I hope so. I really do. Like I said before, I used to view singleness in a completely negative light. The reason for this goes back to episodes three and episode five. If you haven't watched episode three, you you probably should go listen to that. Episode three has not been getting enough love in the list of all the podcast episodes so far. So I'm kind of hoping that it gets a little bit more love because episode five is getting played the heck out. Thank you all so, so much for listening to the struggles that I faced growing up with women but uh, episode three kind of predates that because it ju- it takes you back to where it all started. So the issues with women grew out of a lot of things that happened that I discussed in episode three. So that's why episode three and episode five are equally as important to each other. All that time, all that effort to get female best friends and female friends in general, that literally was the end goal from episode three and then into episode five. Now that I'm not in that place, it's been great having female friends and best friends. Galena being my third, she came through this year, and boy, oh boy, when we get to the New Year's ones, it's just, yeah, when we get to the New Year's ones, you'll see. It's, it's going to be crazy. But that's how I used to view singleness. Now, I view singleness a completely different way. And it kind of goes something like this. So, the way I look at it is that falling in love with, dating, and eventually marrying your best friend is possible. So, if you have a girl best friend that's not taken, because obviously if your female best friend is dating someone that it's literally impossible. It's out of the question. Uh, But, you know, if she's not dating anybody, she's single. And if your guy best friend is single, ladies, then go for it. Keep that possibility in the back of your mind. If you're single, then it's just a matter of time before she comes along. The reason for this is because, honestly, despite only being in one toxic relationship... And haven't been ghosted on a date. In other words, despite my lack of intense dating experience, like a lot of people have, those tiny small experiences were worth learning from. They shaped my view of singleness the way it is today. And in addition, I've seen so many positive, amazing examples that aren't the norm. Like my guy Christian or my friend Taylor's fiance. As of late, those are the two that I, that really come to mind the most. So let me kind of set this up for you, then then we can move forward a little bit more. So yes, 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 you have the dudes that have it all together. They're established, established. I'm talking. They have a degree. They they have a job that pays. Twenty five, thirty dollars an hour where they make, you know, thirty, sixty, a hundred thousand dollars a year. They're set set. They have homes, they have cars. You get those dudes from time to time. I'm not knocking those guys. They're cool. That's a degree of adulthood. That's an agree of excuse me, a degree of independence that exists. And if you're at that point, praise God. Awesome. Proud of you. But not every dude is there. And you shouldn't expect every dude to reach that level of quote-unquote independence or quote-unquote stability 
before being able to meet someone. And I'll explain that in just a second. Take these two dudes, for example. They didn't have degrees. In fact, one of them had a son. That'd be Taylor's fiance. Pretty much, he shared his story in uh, one of their episodes on the YouTube channel that they have together. And I resonated with his story simply because he felt like he wasn't worthy of his now fiance that he ended up with eventually through, you know, just starting out dating her. Same with my guy, Christian. I talked about his story just a couple of weeks ago for his birthday. His whole life was Jesus, church. Yes, he had a job. He, I mean, we both worked at Giant. It was terrible. But he had a way of making income. He had his own car. Yes, he lived at home. So he wasn't established, established. Again, like certain dudes who have a degree or multiple degrees and they have their own house and car. That My guy wasn't in that category. He had transportation. He could get around. He lived at home. Yeah, he had a job. He had some way of making money. But here's the thing. It was God that counted both of these dudes worthy for the women that they have now. One of my dudes, Christian, married, went to his wedding. It was lit. Possibly going to my friend Taylor's wedding. The point is that it doesn't matter where you are in life. It really doesn't. If someone comes along who's willing to be your everything while you're in the process of developing until you reach a place where you can have your house in order, have, you know, more than just your typical car. Most dudes, most dudes have their own car. Or at least... If they don't have their own car like myself, they eventually work their way up to that point to where they get their own car. That's literally the first thing they get. I don't know a single dude that gets a house before they get a car. Literally, I don't know any guy that has a house first and then gets the car. It's possible. But for me, I don't know any, any dudes that get that. The majority of the dudes I know, they get the car. Then everything else comes after that. That's pretty much the group that I'm going to eventually fall in. Eventually, I'll get the house. Eventually, I'll have the degree. Who knows? I may not have the degree. Ever. It, that may not be something I get. Who knows? Sure, I'll have the insurance license. I'll make the millions of dollars that I can make in the business. That's great. I'll have paid speaking engagements to back me up. The podcast might start blowing up, excuse me, to the point where it can make me money on the side as well. But again, it it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you are in life. If someone comes along, if a dude comes along, girl comes along, then that's an act of God, okay? Plain and simple. It's not coincidence. It's not the universe. No, it's not the universe. Please don't subscribe to that. It's God, pretty much. So, yeah, it, it doesn't matter. And if people tell you that it matters where you are in life before you meet someone special, they're lying to you, basically. Or they're trying to make you follow a timeline that... They either created for themselves and lived through it, or they believe that that the same timeline that they live through is the same timeline that you should live through, and that's basically how it should go. No, not true at all. Don't believe that crap. It's an act of God if someone comes along who's willing to be your everything until you get to the place where you're ready. I kind of sort of feel like that's happening to me right now if it is great if it's not oh well let's move on with the christmas holiday season new year's and valentine's day right next to each other i'm hoping for the best i just met 
my third best friend this year. And it's been going great. So now that it's like the Christmas, New Year's holiday season and Valentine's Day may not be exclusively dating anyone, but I have somebody to enjoy the holidays with and that's all that matters. In fact, what gets overlooked time and time again when it comes to meeting women these days and men, for the ladies who are listening to this, but what gets overlooked time and time again is the concept of mutual friends. You see it all the time in the Hallmark movies. After all, it was a mutual friend that connected me to Galena. Did not know that the woman that I met on Facebook to go on a Hershey Park trip with would end up talking to me three months later. And honestly, like, that's the first tip. If you're The first life tip for you is that if you're not in a romantic season yet, focus on the love that's there through your friends. Because obviously you can't be romantic with your family members. It's illegal. It's disgusting. But you can have, you know, focus on the love that you have through your friends to not replace the romantic void that's in your life, but basically to take your focus off the romantic parts and stabilize it. And who knows? Doing this could possibly lead you to the romantic love you desire. The last part that I want to focus on in this part two, as far as how to handle yourself in the Christmas, New Year's, and Valentine's season, but specifically the Christmas season when everyone else around you is falling in love, is that Hallmark movies and Netflix movies that I keep mentioning, guys, those are heavily, heavily, heavily scripted. And girls. They're scripted. This isn't just about processing real life examples because honestly, at the end of the day, we're all going to watch the Christmas movies with our families. That's a fact. And there will be romantic connotations within the films. A part of handling not being in that season for yourself is realizing that as you watch these movies in the holiday seasons that are that we're approaching now, they're fake. They're heavily scripted. The producer's influence is everywhere. Which means that there's the, the scenarios presented in the movies are not guaranteed to take place in real life. They're just not. Again, I mentioned this in the last podcast episode, but if you're in the D.C. area, snow isn't really going to come until like January, February, but in all the Hallmark movies that you see and the Netflix movies that you see that have all the romantic connotations in it, it's winter, it's probably December, it's snowing. But if you live in Michigan, for example, then yeah. Or if you live in Wisconsin, Green Bay Packers, frozen tundra, yeah. If you live over there, yeah, you'll have a wintry Christmas, all right. Probably get 10, 15 inches, I'm sorry, feet dumped on you. You'll probably have 10, 15 feet of snow dumped on you if you live out there in those states. So in that case, yeah, you will have a Christmassy, you know, feel with snow and everything. And you might be able to get that Ed Sheeran perfect vibe, (laughs) like the music video. But honestly, Nine times out of ten, that's really not going to happen because snow doesn't fall till January or February. And what else? Hmm. The scenarios are not guaranteed to take place in real life. They really just aren't. Doesn't happen like that. There is one, though, that has a real life application. And it's that you never know when your love life is going to start developing. Again. I had no idea I was going to meet Galena. It just happened. 
out of nowhere, I got invited to a Hershey Park event over the summer and connected to her because the person I was originally going to drive with, his car was full. Couldn't go with him. Had to go with somebody else. And out of nowhere, three months later, we start talking. She contacted me, honestly. <laughs> At least I think that's how it happened. But the point is, I've said this in previous podcast episodes, that you can't control your life. You really can't. I had no idea that I would meet Kalina in real life after being connected on Facebook. I thought I'd never hear from her again, basically, after the Hershey Park plans went south. But we started talking out of nowhere. That wasn't scripted. It wasn't planned. It just happened. So if I can give you a second life tip, that's it. It just happens. There's no timetable. And not only is there no timetable, there is no correct time period. So you can be living at home in high school, 17 years old, and you meet your high school sweetheart. And she grows grows up with you, basically. Start dating, marriage, kids, all that jazz. Or you could be 25, like me, in the career world, working, and you meet someone at this age, 25, 26, 27, 28, doesn't matter. It just happens. And when it does happen, who's to say whether you're ready for it or not? Only you and God are the ones that know whether you are ready, whether you are capable of handling a romantic relationship. It's the only opinions, beliefs that should matter. Now, Here's one thing that I need to mention before I end this podcast. There's this post, this this meme, or this specifically post that I just keep seeing over and over again on social media. It has the image of a man and a woman. I think they're holding hands and praying o- over a Bible or something like that. But the tagline says, quote, that relationship hit right when it glorifies God. That literally sounds great in theory. But let's be honest here. That's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Is it true? Yes and no. Not to get biblical on you guys, but let me remind everybody that Hosea and Gomer are a perfect example of a relationship that was romantic that God was pleased with. And the reason why God was pleased with it is because Gomer may have been straying away while Jose was faithful, but God was pleased with that relationship because he was using that relationship as an analogy, as an example, to show the people of Israel how they've been treating him. And so Jose kept going after Gomer and eventually had to buy her back. To prove that not only he loved her, but to prove that God loved her. So to say that that relationship hits right when it glorifies God, if you're insinuating that a romantic relationship between a guy and a girl glorifies God, in air quotes, when they're reading the word together, when they're praying together, when they're doing all the right things and avoiding all the wrong things like having sex before marriage, They're going to church together, Bible study together. To say that that relationship hits right because it's glorifying God. No, 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 that is completely wrong, false, stupid. Come on, son. Like, even if 
you know, your relationship with your significant other isn't exactly like that, who's to say God isn't pleased? If your relationship with your significant other has Jesus at the center of your relationship, regardless of what you all do, it glorifies God, period. You don't have to do certain things in order to have a relationship that's romantic that, quote unquote, glorifies God. There's no law. There's no written rules or standards. It's all opinion based. And it's between you and God and the girl you're with as to what you want to do, not do, how you want to operate your relationship. So Christ followers, if you're listening to this, I'm not going to tell you how to operate your relationship. And no, a Facebook post that says that relationship hit right when it glorifies God. No, that relation, that, that post is not you know, a standard or a parameter for, oh, your relationship is in right standing or pleasing to God because, no, no, don't pay attention to that crap. That's bull crap, okay? It's between you, God, him, her. Plain and simple. So, at the end of the day, this is the most wonderful time of the year. And it should be, even if you're single. The reason why is because, you, again, you don't know. I don't know how many times I have to repeat this to get it in your head. But you don't know what's going to happen. Blink once. And there's a gorgeous woman or a handsome fellow standing right in front of you. You can be single Right now, listening to this video, and then a week from now, after listening to this podcast, you meet somebody going to the Christmas season, Buddha, New Year's Eve, Buddha. Is it because you listen to this podcast? I don't know. Maybe. If it is, praise God. If it's not, still praise God, because even if you didn't listen to this podcast and it happens, okay, great. That's life. You don't know when you're going to meet your significant other. No one does. And you can't say that this person is or isn't your significant other right off the bat. You got to get to know them. That's why Christmas is the most wonderful time to date. You can get to know the person. Yeah, you're not going to get to know them in three, four weeks of Christmas New Year's holiday, and then boom, could happen like that. But in most cases, it takes months. I'm on month number three. It's been lit. But again, I didn't know it was going to happen, and neither do you. Blink once. You're single today. Tomorrow, you meet somebody. Now, that doesn't mean that you're no longer single. You are single until you... Ask him or her to marry you and you get engaged. That's when you have a title of fiance. And then at that point, you are no longer single and you should not be talking to other men or other women. And then, of course, when you're married, duh. But if you're single and seeing someone single or dating, you're still single. Just want to throw that out there. But again, you're not exclusively single where you can't meet different types of people at the same time when you're talking to someone who could possibly be a potential. That's the key word. Potential. If I could sum up the Christmas romance podcast episodes in one word, it'd be that. Potential. It is the most wonderful time of the year. It is the most wonderful time to date. If you date, go for it. If not, then that's fine. 
God may not have you in a season where he has you dating someone or could be a self choice. I don't know where you're at, but what I do know is that it's the most wonderful time of the year. All right, I'm out. Episode three drops next week. Take care and enjoy your holiday. Peace.